All right, this is our last lecture on uncertainty, uh, and it's going to tell us about uh, how to propagate uncertainty uh, through an equation. <laughs> last one. Not the end of the class. There's still a lot left. <laughs> All right, so what we want to do uh, sometimes is we measure one value in order to find another value. Uh, and um, just to give you an example of that, we might want to find a flow rate coming out of a hose. Uh, and so we might measure the volume of a bucket and the time it takes to fill that bucket. So we're not actually directly measuring flow rate here. Uh, we're measuring two other things that we'll then use in an equation uh, to find a third thing. Um, the process by which we do that is called air propagation. Um, where we move from finding uh, an uncertainty in time and an uncertainty in volume. And both of these might involve random uncertainties and systematic uncertainties. So we want to find the total uncertainties in each of those. Uh, and then we want to um, turn that into an uncertainty in the flow rate here. And that's, that's air propagation. So, the question here is that a question of sensitivity. So we've talked about sensitivity with calibration, uh, but any uh, function we can talk about in terms of sensitivity. And really that's just another term for slope, right? When we ask how sensitive is Y, my calculated quantity to my measured quantity, we're asking when X changes a little bit, when my measured quantity changes a little bit, how much does my calculated quantity change? And so we're asking how sensitive is it to those changes? And so sensitivity is going to be a function of a derivative of slope. So the uncertainty in our calculated value is the uncertainty in our measured value. That's this distance right here multiplied by the slope, which is the slope of this line here by dy dx. And you can imagine if that dy dx was really high, if it was a slope like this, uh, then this, you know, let's say my slope is starts here, I, my uncertainty in y would range from here all the way up to there. Okay, so the higher that slope is, the larger my uncertainty in my, um, in my calculated quantity is. And notice that that's not necessarily going to be the same at all measured x values, right? So if my function, my known function here, um, is a curve, then that slope is different here than here. So it's important that we measure that dy dx at the, at the x value that we're interested in, at the mean x value. Okay, so let's consider our flow rate example here. So in this case, uh, our y equals fx, our function, is q equals v over t. Okay, And we're interested in when we have uncertainties in t and an uncertainty in v, how does that change our uncertainty in the flow rate q? Um, so let's think about uh, the volume side of that. We want to find out the uncertainty in flow rate caused by the volume measurement. Later, we'd have to find the uncertainty in flow rate caused by the time measurement. Um, so this is a one at a time process. And we'll write this like this. The uncertainty in Q caused by V is going to be the slope of DQ dV times the uncertainty in V. And this term here is just a, a derivative. So we just have to do the calculus, right? So uh, dv of v over t uh, is 1 over t, uh, and we multiply that by our uncertainty. And so our uncertainty in the flow rate caused by the volume measurement is this value here. And when we calculated that, when we wanted to turn that into a number, we'd use the average value of t here. We would have found this earlier, right, the uncertainty in the volume you know, we do find a random uncertainty, maybe a systematic uncertainty. Uh, in So we know what that is, and then we multiply it by 1 over that average t value. That would be one of the elemental uncertainties, this guy, 
would be an elemental uncertainty in the flow rate of Q. We then also have to find another elemental uncertainty, which would be U uncertainty in flow caused by time, uh, and then combine that in quadrature to find the total uncertainty in Q. Okay, so that's a, it sounds complicated. It's not terribly complicated, especially if the calculus isn't hard, which most of the time it's not. Um, but a couple of things to keep in mind as you uh, try to find a total uncertainty. Uh, one, judgment is involved. You can never make an uncertainty smaller than your calculations, but sometimes you have to say, uh, I think it's actually a little bit larger than that. I'm less sure about that number than the numbers show up. Um, there's no correct uncertainty value. Um, this is an estimate, uh, but this is also why we follow a conventional process, right? If we follow the same process as the scientist in California and a scientist in Germany, uh, then we can compare our numbers in a meaningful way and know what those numbers mean. Uh, make sure you pay attention to units and to confidence levels. And this comes up, those mistakes get made uh, quite a bit. And then that little trick about uh, error uh, uh, combining in quadrature, if, if an elemental error is small, we can ignore it because when we combine that with other elemental errors, it's not going to matter that much. And here's a little math to prove that point to you. Um, if we have one uncertainty that's only one-fifth of the other, um, the final uncertainty here is very close to the larger number. So when I say that quadrature is dominated by the larger numbers, that's what I mean. Uh, this one it adds much more to the overall value than that point two does. Okay, so there's a nice list, but wouldn't it be nice to have a handy chart, right? Look at this <laughs> handy chart. <laughs> Just what you needed. Uh, and so this tells us basically how to go through the process of uncertainty uh, by a little flow chart. So, you know, start with either you're doing design stage analysis to figure out whether your instrumentation is good enough, or you're using conventional analysis to find out if, um, and to basically assign an uncertainty value to your final answers. Uh, and then you can follow this chart through, uh, through its little arrows to, to get to your end point. So, Uncertainty uh, is sometimes <laughs> complicated, right? This makes it look a little easier than sometimes it is. Uh, and it's a little tiresome at times. Nobody loves uncertainty, uh, but it really is a, it's an important part of your experimental uh, skills. Uh, not only to be able to calculate uncertainty, but to understand what it means. All right, and that's it.